What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and uh, we've got an issue at Twitter. I talked about it on Saturday with Linda Yacanaro, uh, Elon Musk's bizarre choice uh, to take over at Twitter. Now, many people who have seen my videos or other people's coverage of this individual uh, will have already been informed that they are a mainstream media clown, stooge, someone that is literally proudly uh, working with the World Economic Forum, somebody that uh, is pro mask, pro poke, has sang songs about them. I'm not kidding you. Somebody who has spoken out in favor of uh, self censorship, censorship on the platform, um, censoring yourself in exchange for more advertising dollars, things of that nature, which seems to fly directly in the face of Elon Musk's attempt to monetize the platform by demanding eight dollars from all of us. Then over the weekend, uh, it looks like somebody was roasting Linda Yacanaro, uh, and suddenly they were banned permanently from the platform. A, a roast that was totally reasonable and totally an obvious joke, uh, suspended permanently from the platform. Was that Elon? Honestly, probably. Uh, probably trying to white knight his um, new CEO pick. I, I actually understand why he, why he picked um, this individual because they're connected to the mainstream media. They have all the right WEF connections and all this kind of stuff. Um, but, uh, no, this person in no way, shape or form seems to be the right individual to lead, uh, Twitter. It looks like they're going to lead us right back to Twitter 1.0. You might as well just let Jack still run it. Linda Yacanaro shares her first tweet since becoming Twitter's new CEO as Elon Musk addresses quote concerns about new hire. Well, there are many concerns, and unless this individual comes out and outright disavows the WEF, um, look, if they want to be a, a, a masker, that's fine. I don't care about that. That's a personal decision. Um, but the WEF thing is a bridge too far. Um, so Brace your selling, quote, I've long been inspired, responding to Elon, uh, I've long been inspired by your vision to create a brighter future. I'm excited to bring this vision to Twitter and transform this business together. She then wrote, I see I have some new followers. Hi, uh, I'm not as prolific as Elon yet, but I'm just as committed to the future of the platform. Your feedback is vital to that future. I'm here for all of it. Let's keep the conversation going and build Twitter 2.0. Now I'm going to pause this, not video, but this, this article here and go to where it would appear that uh, this individual, as shared by Liberty Lockdown, uh, shout out to Liberty Lockdown, generally good coverage. Um, saying Elon Musk, come on, man, nuking someone for a figure of speech and a joke to boot, say it isn't. So Elon says, as soon as Linda Yacanaro is ready, we will do a spaces where you can ask us anything. Yeah, we all know how that's going to go. You're going to hear the distant slurping of Ian Miles Chong, um, Majid Nawad or whatever the heck his name is and like the same two other Elon sycophants asking questions uh, regular people people who are going to push the envelope are going to have almost no chance whatsoever so Top Lobster who I don't know who it is says uh, we'd prefer you launch Lindsay uh, yeah, uh, ACC into space <clears throat> by the way that's not even her ad account Wait, is it Linda or Linda Yak? Linda Yak. Oh, no, that's right. There's a Y in this one. So he misspelled it, I guess. But uh, then it seemed that he was permanently suspended for that. Like, it appears your account was suspended due to violation of terms of service for being a recipient. Your account will not be reinstated. Like, What? I mean, it's it's like, um, it's it's extremely curious. I don't know, like, th this is very very curious. Now I don't know if he's back. Nope, still suspended. So Elon suspends this guy for a joke, making fun of his new CEO. This is a very very bad sign, very bad sign. And one that, you know, we know that Elon will often intercede it directly in things. And I suspect now if he comes out and says there was something else they were po posting and it was a different, you know, the timing was weird. They'd have to even prove that because this looks very bad.
Very bad. Now, previously, Musk made the announcement of Yakaneros or Yaka Rhino. Don't really care. Naina, no, you're not going to work here much longer. Hiring explained how their roles would differ. I'm excited to welcome Linda as a new CEO of Twitter. Musk retweeted, Linda will focus primarily on business operations while I focus on product design and new tech. Looking forward to working with Linda to transform this platform into X, the everything app. But again, Elon hired somebody who he has himself spoken out against the WEF. Following Musk's message, some users expressed concern over their freedom of speech being violated, citing the interview where Linda had with Twitter owner weeks before. Their Twitter user assumes that Yakarino would push initiatives to limit user speech to appease advertisers because that's exactly what she said. Musk replied, I hear your concerns, but don't judge too early. I'm adamant about defending free speech, even if it means losing money, except then why did this individual get banned? Now, again, it is possible that there is an alter there is a separate reason why they were banned and the timing didn't line up, but it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. And the thing is like, you know, is this somebody that the mainstream media is going to embrace? Sure, it looks like. It says, instead, Yakarino will need to channel considerable skills to convince many of the same advertisers to return to Twitter, which has seen ad sales have from $5 billion to $2.5 billion, billion have, as brands have balked at Musk's moves to drastically relax content moderation policies. I also would point out Advertising dollars are pretty much down everywhere across the board. They're across down all across YouTube, and that's one of the most censored places on the internet. Quote, she's ideal for the job, said Sir Martin Sorrell, the founder of marketing service giant WPP and digital ad business S4 Capital, who most recently spent time with Yaccarino at the Keynes Lions advertising event in the south of France last year. I don't think Musk could have found anyone better for understanding advertisers both in analog and in digital. That's probably true. This is what this individual's job is. The problem is the very first thing they suggested to bring new advertising dollars was to censor speech, not to, you know, court different kinds of advertisers or to convince advertisers that freedom of speech isn't bad, but to just censor your speech. Yacarino has softly taken Musk to task over his cavalier decision-making and penchant for using social media to make announcements that have landed him in hot water with regulators telling him at a recent event to perhaps refrain from making posts at 3 a.m. However, when she suggested he be held to a different and higher standard of conduct due to his ownership of Twitter and popularity of the site, the world's second richest man fired back that the world would be that would be a dis, dis, diminishment of freedom of speech. The appointment of Yaccarino, whose Instagram account features f photos with stars, including Vin Diesel, Rami Malek, Kim Kardashian, don't care about any of those people, has promoted a scouring of her own background as observers seek to glean her potential decision-making making strategy. Her role as the chair of a task force on the future of work at the WEF forum in Davos, a target of conspiracy theorists, an event criticized by Musk himself led to comments from some quarters suggesting she might undermine Twitter's absolutist free speech policy. Well, they don't have an absolutist free speech policy. They did, however, roll this out today as I think as a response to things. It says, uh, Twitter's, uh, Twitter's trust and safety team are working on implementing a solution that will do away with permanent bans for lawful speech. The team are still working on scaling the solution up. Progress is ongoing. I would suspect uh, this is, you know, part of that. You see Alex here, Elon and Twitter 2.0 employees aren't putting in hard work until midnight at XHQ. Uh, so it can be a, come a pro censorship platform again. That I can tell you. There's a total shift in the atmosphere here from the workers I talked to, and that's not going to change regardless of the CEO. Uh, Alex, I, I've got mad love for Alex, but he's 100% wrong about that. Uh, a CEO's primary job, in my experience, is to define culture. Uh, the CEO can can uh, implement hiring practices to make sure you're hiring only certain type of people. It isn't a coincidence that nearly everybody that worked at Twitter was some, not just a liberal, but some kind of woke leftist who saw their role as, you know, protector of the planet uh, 
it was because of their hiring practices. They actively seeked these people out. I've got a lot of love for Alex. I just disagree with that entirely. Uh, a CEO can absolutely control these type of things. You know, and you know, the past, the stuff that Yaccarino has done, I don't think makes her a good choice for CEO at all. Um, you know, a, a lot of people are canceling their Twitter blue about this. A lot of people are asking about, you know, these type of things. Um, you know, Clay Thompson here writing, it really does feel like the keys have been handed straight back to the old enemy. Time will tell. Are you committed to free speech, even if it means losing advertiser dollars in the short term? That I believe she, she has, you know, said outright that she is not. Uh, not a good look. Uh, not not excited at all for this hire. Uh, it's it's just not good. I, I think that a lot of times people are who they show you they are. You know, people are what this woman has a body of work of of being pro censorship and and pro suckling at the teat of advertisers. And I don't think that that's the best way forward for Twitter. I think that they should be looking to monetize their app through their users, by adding additional features. I don't think advertising dollars in the short term, sure, they're important, but in long term, they shouldn't be what he's really pr focused on on offering. But uh, what do I know? I'm just some Midwest guy, I guess. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like on it and we'll talk to you again real soon.